Hi, my name is Chris Meyer. I'm a business development and key account manager with ANL Labs. And my topic today is understanding your solar report and looking at how to figure out your solar fertility from your solar report. There's a lot of influences um, that affect your nutrient availability. You know, crop sensitivity is one of them. Different crops are sensitive to different nutrients that are available in that soil. Your soil type will influence your nutrients. Soil pH, I think that's a given. There are nutrient interactions that will affect that. And we'll go through that uh, a little bit later in the presentation. And overall yield expectation of your crop that you are growing. Cultural practices, you know, your farming, uh, if you're no-till, strip-till, or, or into um, full tillage, will affect nutrient availability. And also, Mother Nature plays a major role <coughs> in what happens in your soil productivity. So the first thing that we see on our soil test report is the organic matter. Organic matter is very important. It provides structure to your soils. It's an indication of what your soil uh, moisture holding capacity will be. It is presented on the uh, soil test report as a percentage. And most soils are in that uh, 2 to 5% as a mineral soil. And we'll get organic soils over 10%, sometimes up to 50% organic matter, depending on where they are. It is a measurement of the uh, plant and animal residue on that soil. And it does act as a reserve for many nutrients, especially nitrogen, for your, for your crop. The next one that we see is phosphorus. Its main function is to provide energy for the crop. Is it important for root development, cell formation, seed formation, and crop maturity? Your phosphorus uptake can depend on other nutrients such as magnesium, zinc, and other factors such as soil pH and temperature. It is reported as your PPM. We also include, which is on the second line, the saturation percent P. This is an indication of the amount of phosphorus that is available in the soil. It is influenced by your CEC, and it takes into account the high aluminum or high calcium, depending on uh, what uh, pH level is of your soil. The next one we see is potassium. Very important, it does a lot of functions within the, uh, in the plant itself. It's important for photosynthesis, respiration, water metabolism, protein synthesis. It activates more than 60 uh, enzyme systems within that plant. It also regulates nutrients, uh, translocation in the plant, but is also greatly affected uh, availability by compaction within your soil. So the more compaction you have, the less available potassium you may have available for the plant. Reported in PPM, and it's a measurement of the available potassium within that soil. And optimum ranges depend on, on the type of soil you have, so it depends on your CEC. Percent K is a measurement of the uh, K that is occupied in, in, as a cation in that soil. And optimum levels are in between 2 to 5%, depending on your soil type. Magnesium is next on our, on our list. It does a lot within the plant as well. It completes the formation of chlorophyll for helping with photosynthesis. It does regulate crop maturity and adequate levels. It's an activator and a component to many of the plant enzymes that uh, are produced within the plant. It also regulates uh, phosphorus uptake. It is uh, reported as a PPM is available magnesium in the soil on the report. Also is reported as a percent mag in our percent base saturation. Optimum ranges are between 10 and 20 percent. Below you will see of that 10 percent you will see uh, visual deficiencies but if you're above 20 percent you may see some deficiencies as well as well as it usually acts as a tighter soil and will have some anaerobic uh, conditions as part of it. Calcium is next on the, 
on the soil report. Calcium is important in the plant as well. It enhances root uh, development, reduces soil acidity, and decreases the risk of toxicity of a certain micronutrients within that, uh, that soil profile. It also is important for microbial activity and cell structure. As a percent base saturation, the optimum levels we're looking at is between 60 and 80 percent. And we do use that as, uh, as sometimes as a target for lime application as, as opposed to using the pH and the buffer pH. Next on the list is sodium. It's reported as PPM or a percent uh, NA as a base saturation. High exchangeable sodium may prevent growth of plants, usually restricting uh, root development. And we can test for soluble salts also in case you are in a high sodium or a sodic type soil situation. Next on our report is the pH. It's good for, uh, a good pH is good for uh, yield and quality. Increased uptake of plant nutrients in the development of root nodules, water uptake and weed control if you have a proper balanced pH soil. Most plant nutrients have reduced available below a, a pH of six. And we have potential for nutrient toxicity at even lower, below five. Buffer pH is used to determine the amount of lime to, to apply. It takes into consideration the hydrogen um, ions within the soil itself. And the buffer pH is a more stable than the regular pH due to the fact that we're, we are taking into the, uh, an account the level of hydrogen within that soil. Here's a, a chart on what is actually available depending on your uh, pH of your soil. As you can see, most nutrients are most available within that range between five and a half to seven and a half. Most people have seen Mulder's chart. As you can see, there's interactions in uptake and interaction between different nutrients depending on uh, if there's an antagonism or a benefit to those. The next thing we have on the list is the cation exchange capacity. What it does, it measures the soil's ability to hold nutrients. Most of them are the cations that are in our soil, potassium, magnesium, calcium, hydrogen, and sodium levels. It is reported as milliequivalents in 100 grams of soil. The lower the CEC, the lighter the soil texture is, or sandy. And it is very important to factor consider when it comes to nutrient recommendations on where you want your uh, CEC to be. So most nutrients uh, on their cation exchange capacity is based off of that CEC. So calcium, once again, you're wanting in that 60 to 80 percent range. Magnesium in that 10 to 20. Potassium in that 3 to 7. Hydrogen between 5 and 15. Sodium less than 1 percent. And aluminum the same at less than 1 percent. We get to the micronutrients on the second line, starting with sulfur. It is very important for plant production. It it's a constituent of proteins. It's involved in respiration and uh, nodule formation. What we measure on it is the sulfate sulfur, which is readily available and preferred by plants for uptake. It has become more important to look at this due to the effect of uh, a decrease in sulfur in, in our atmosphere. We used to get it as acid rain, but now we are adding it to most of our uh, fertilizer blends. It is somewhat susceptible to leaching, especially in lighter textured soils. And having an optimum level greater than 25 ppm helps with maximizing plant productivity. The next section is mainly the five uh, micronutrients, zinc, manganese, iron, copper, and boron. Although they're not required in large quantities, we still like to have adequate levels of these, um, and they are as important as a micronutrient uh, in our soils. Optimum ranges for zinc, for instance, is around 5 ppm, magnesium around 33, iron 
in that 25 range, copper at 3 ppm, and boron between 1 and 3 depending on your soil type. Next in our soil test report, we look at K to mag ratio. ANL's research has showed, in most cases, a correlation between yield and crop performance to our K to mag ratio. As we get a better ratio, we get an increase in nutrient efficiency. The sweet spot seems to be between a 0.2 to 0.35 for most soils. To change that K to mag ratio, if you have a high one, is to increase your magnesium levels. And if your K to mag level is low, increasing potassium or adding potash to that soil will help change that ratio. And lastly, on the report is the ENR, or estimated nitrogen release. Bacterial activity helps release some of this nitrogen stored in the organic matter, and the ENR is an estimate of the amount of nitrogen that will be released for that plant over a growing season. And that's it that we have for understanding your soil test report. Thank you.